It wasn't until I looked in the camera that I realized I have nap head. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at middle of the book march and it's Sunday as I'm filming this and I took a nap. I <laughs> possibly sound groggier and my hair is all doing some funky stuff. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, well, I look fine. I look fine. So today is a chatty video. I wanted to talk about an article I read in a bookish magazine and I thought it might be interesting to you all or some of you or a couple of you. Um, my family and I went to Barnes & Noble a couple of weekends ago, and I don't often go into Barnes & Noble. I don't love Barnes & Noble. Um, I don't know. It's fine. It's one of the only uh, new bookstores around me, unless I kind of want to explore a little bit. There are a few others here and there, but Barnes & Noble is the easiest to get to. I think it's the closest for me. So we went in and my daughter had a gift card. So that's another reason we went in, but I looked at the magazines, which I don't do often. And I typically go towards, you know, like the arts and literature magazines. And I found one I had never seen before. This is called O Reader. And this is for the love of reading. It was the first time I had ever seen this. I don't know. I think it's been out for a while. And this is issue 12. I don't know if this is a Barnes & Noble publication. It has a website. Um, you know, Barnes & Noble is, the, is on the inside cover, a big giant full page ad, but it doesn't have, as far as I could see, it doesn't have any ads in here. It's basically just a journal for people who love to read. And here's, here's the subscription card I might have to take a look at that but it's it's and I haven't even read all the articles yet it's basically an art, a, a collection of articles for readers so I thought that was really cool and I found an article that I was interested in let me see um page 18 and this is something that I have always talked about <laughs> for um for, the, for my whole life of reading. I, my friends and I have talked about this all the time. And uh, it is this article is called Taking a Book for a Walk by Jim Swinehart. The subtitle is Don't Leave Home Without It. What? A wallet? Phone? Shoes? No, a book. And I, this, I thought it was really cute. Now I, it's only a one page, it's only a, this one page article. So really easy to read. Um, now I have said for forever that I don't like to shop. I hate to shop. I, I hate to shop. I buy as much online as I can. I buy as much online from uh, smaller stores that I can for for local stores that may have a website. I try to shop local. Obviously, I don't buy everything in smaller stores. There's I can only do so much. I hate going into physical stores. Christmas is a nightmare for me. And I try to buy as much as I can online. So I hate to shop, but the one thing besides books that I love to buy, and I have to do this in person, are purses or handbags or pocketbooks, whatever you call them. I love them and I've always loved them. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about purses and tote bags and bags and I just have always loved them. They've been like the second thing beyond, beside books that I love to go and buy. And I never really spend a lot of money because I change them out because I will keep several of them and I'll change them when I feel like it, when the mood strikes me. So beside a book, I love to buy a purse. And I've always told my friends, whatever purse I buy has to be big enough to fit a book. <laughs> And I've been like that for years. I don't, the only time I buy small little handbags are when I'm using them as a glorified wallet to put into a much bigger tote bag of some sort. And that tote bag carries everything. I use it for my laptop bag, my book, my whatever, papers, whatever I need to carry with me. So my bags have to be big enough to have, to carry a book. 
preferably my purse has to be big enough so that when I'm not carrying my whole tote bag, I'm carrying my purse and it has room enough for a book of some sort in there. So the article was really timely for me, really cute. Uh, one of the quotes in the article says, I'll level with you. If I don't have a book available, I feel odd, idle, stuck, like I'm wasting time. I totally feel that way because if I'm stuck somewhere and I don't have something to read, it's like, oh, what a huge waste of time. I could have gotten 10 minutes of reading or 15 minutes of reading. And I've always told everybody who knows me, uh, my older daughter especially, because I've had to, I've shown up at her house before or I've waited for her before. And she's like, I'm really sorry. And um, I, I was late, whatever. And I said, I, I would tell her, Amy, I have a book. <laughs> and she's like, I know, but I'm sorry I was late. And I would tell her, I don't think you understand. I'm, I love it when I have extra time. If, so, if I'm waiting for somebody, I'll just bring that book out. Or, or I have this. And this is my Kindle Oasis. I also have the Kindle app on my phone. So I'm not typically carrying this around but I have the Kindle app. So if somebody's late or, and it's happened before, I've meeting a friend for coffee or dinner, they'll be late, I'll be, okay, no problem. And I really mean it because I have a book to read. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to quickly show you what I mean by this. And if you're, if you're you know, an avid reader, and if you're a person who carries a bag of some sort, you know what I mean. There's always a book in there, if not more than one. So let me show you the obvious. The obvious is the Kindle. This is a perfect size to, to put in almost any bag. Now, as I said, the smallest bags I have would not fit this, but that's because they are only glorified wallets. And I have friends who have teased me for so long about all my giant bags and why do you need a purse that big? And I'm like, you're not a reader, are you? <laughs> you don't get it. You just don't get it. But the Kindle is so easy to just slip into a bag. I have a couple hundred Kindle books, so I have all the choice in the world of what I want to read uh, beyond the books I've already read because I don't get rid of everything. So this is the easiest thing to do to put in any bag. However, e-reading is not my favorite and it's not the first thing I reach for when I want to read. So it's available and there's been many times when I have picked it up and put it in my bag if I'm going out. It's great for babysitting. When I put my granddaughter to bed and I have a couple hours before my daughter comes home, I usually pull out my Kindle book and I start reading. But I've said before, and I made a video about it, e-reading is not my favorite thing. It's not as fun for me. It's not as enjoyable for me as holding a, a paper book. So what do I do in that situation? There are many things to do because not every book is the same size. Um, I'm going to be doing Shorty September next month. And so I've been quietly collecting a lot of my books that I already own that would be good for me for Shorty September. And almost all of them would easily fit into the current bag I'm carrying. This is one of them. This is Blood Child by Octavia E. Butler. And this is a really small you know, small little paperback. It is 213 pages and it's actually going to be a pretty fast read too because the font is a great size. There's a lot of white space on the pages. A lot of the pages look like that. But this is a super easy book to slip into my little handbag. Um, Octavia E. Butler is a science fiction author, was a science fiction author, I've read several of her books. I, I love her writing. Excellent, excellent science fiction author. So this would be a, a really easy one to put in my little, my little pocketbook, my little purse. The other one I'm thinking of for Shorty September is, uh, this is this whole book is not a Shorty, but it, it contains three novellas. And this is George Eliot's Scenes of Clerical Life. I might, I'm going to, I really do want to reread George Eliot's works, and I probably will do that the remainder of my life. But this has three novellas in it, and it's an, an again, it's a it's an old Oxford World Classic version. It's small, it's pretty thin, it's a paperback. It's a really easy size. It's bigger than the Octavia E. Butler, but it's a really easy size to slip into my purse. Uh, very easy to carry. It's lightweight. Both of these are, and honestly. Blood Child is not much bigger than my Kindle, 
so you know it's clearly thicker but not a lot bigger so it's a really easy portable book and this one is too it's just lightweight and it's kind of a I don't know kind of a smaller edition paperback really easy to tr to carry around so what do I do when I have bigger books that they won't fit in my purse and even if I have a large purse and they would fit it's gonna be pretty heavy if I'm lugging that around especially if I decide to bring two books with me wherever I go this one is, um, I just started this book. This is Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende, translated from Spanish by Margaret Sayers Peden. And this is for the Blind Eye Book Club for August, but this is a hardback and this is not a lightweight book. It's one of those books with the type of paper that's heavy and it's not too short. It is 400, no, it's almost four, it's 399 pages. So it's a pretty, it's a good size book, but this is heavy. I, I, I don't know why. It's, it's an older copy of a book. The paper is um, pretty like heavy duty quality paper. The, the actual construction of the book, the cardboard or whatever they use to make these things is heavy. So I could, it just won't fit in my current purse. I could switch over simply to get a bigger pocketbook or handbag. I'm not going to do that. Of course it'll fit in my tote bag, but do I want to carry this around? Um, yes, I do. This one I will bring to work with me tomorrow because I just started it. I'm really, I'm like just in the beginning pages of it, and I know that I, I'm going to enjoy this because Isabel Allende's writing is beautiful, according to me. So I will put this in my tote bag alongside my purse to bring to work, and I will read it during my breaks and read it during lunch. And if I happen to go somewhere and have to wait in the car for whatever reason, I have this. So yeah, now this one, here's where we get into dangerous territory because my the, the next book for my Critical Chicks book group in person is The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. This is the paperback copy from the UK, but this is a brick. And it is a large format paperback, the same size as a, the same size footprint as a hardback book. But this book is 724 pages. And it's super heavy for even for a paperback because this is a very large book. This I would be hesitant to put in my tote bag and bring anywhere because it's enormous. And this wouldn't, this would be difficult to read anywhere outside of my house um, because of its weight, its heft, it, its length. So I would second guess myself if I decided, do I want to bring that one to work? Probably. But what I've been known to do once in a while is I will have a physical copy of a book and I'll also get a duplicate Kindle book. So if I go to work, I'll read on my Kindle and then I'll come home and I'll pick up the physical copy, find my place where I left off all my Kindle and I'll read it on paper at home after work. So I've been known to do that too. I don't do it with every book I have, believe me. A lot of times I'll do it with the super long ones. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna, this is a big one. It's, it's heavy just holding on to it and it's thick, it's long and it's heavy. So, so yeah, that was a really fun article to read. I was really happy to discover this magazine. And um, let me know if you guys have seen this, if you have a local Barnes & Noble, if you've read this magazine, if you've subscribed to it, uh, if you enjoy it. It does have a website as well. It's oreader.com. And it has quite a few really fun, interesting articles in it. And it applies to readers, avid reader people, people who are passionate about reading. Basically, any of us who are creating content or watching these videos. So let me know if you've, if you've enjoyed this, if you've read it. Let me know if you take a book everywhere and what form you take it in. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.